This is the Bible's explanation for the name Yahweh. But there are certain important and unique features of this burning bush dialogue. First, God identifies himself to Moses as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He reveals to Moses a new name, Yahweh, so that Yahwism and the Yahweh cult can be said to begin only with Moses. Exodus 6, verses 2 to 4, very important passage. Exodus 6, verses 2 to 4. And here God says, I am Yahweh. I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai, but I did not make myself known to them by my name, Yahweh. Now this contradicts the J source. And many scholars have suggested that P and E preserve a memory of a time when Israel worshipped the Canaanite god El. P and E wish to claim that the God who covenanted with the patriarchs is the God of the Exodus, but now with a new name. God is six times called El Shaddai. Other names are El Elyon, El Olam, El Roi, El Bethel. You can see the translations of these. The everlasting God, God most high, a God of seeing, the God of the house of God, and so on. El is the name of the chief God in the Canaanite pantheon. It's an important set of texts that were discovered at a place called Ras Shamra. Ras Shamra was ancient Ugarit. In 1928, a peasant in Syria discovered a tomb at Ras Shamra, which was subsequently excavated by the French, and it was found to contain a library of tablets that were written in a language very, very close to Biblical Hebrew. It's clear that Hebrew is simply a Canaanite dialect. In fact, I remember reading one scholar said, if you go back far enough, um, you're really hard pressed to tell the difference between Canaanite and uh, Hebrew. And in these texts, we read of the exploits of the gods of Canaanite religion. These gods include the sky god El, I've listed here, uh, the father of the various gods and humans. El has a wife, Asherah, she's listed third on your paper, a mother goddess, their daughter, Anat, who is a goddess of love and war, she's quite fierce, and then their son, Baal, who is a storm god. He's depicted in mythological literature as defeating both the chaotic sea god, um, the sea god, Yam, and the god of death, Mot. There are striking resemblances between the biblical god of the patriarchs and the Canaanite god, El. El is the head of the council of gods. He is said to have a long white beard. He dwells on a mountain top in a tent. His epithets include father of all creatures, bull, king. He's also described as the protector of patriarchs, patriarchal figures, a god of the father of the clan, it says in the texts. He guides them, he protects them, he promises them descendants. Many biblical passages depict God exactly this way, as the head of a council of divine beings. He's occasionally described with some of the epithets that are associated with El. He's referred to as the father of all creatures. There are poetic passages in which he is referred to as bull, also certainly as king. And in the patriarchal narratives, God refers to himself as the God of the Father. I am the God of the Father, the same way El is referred to. He guides and protects the patriarchs. He makes promises of progeny to Abraham and his heirs. Um, he also is associated with a mountaintop, Sinai, and gives instructions for the building of a tabernacle, a tent-like structure in which he will dwell. Many personal and place names in the patriarchal narratives are compounds in which one element is El. Yisrael, Yishmael, Beth El, El is the God of the patriarchs. By contrast, after the time of Moses, Israelite names start to be formed using Yah or Yahu as part of the name Yahweh. Elijah in Hebrew is Eliyahu. So you start to have theophorics, names that use the name of a deity, which are using forms of Yahu instead of El.